What up, guys? So it has been a very long time in the making of this outfit. I started the original outfit in 2016 out of a bunch of paper mache, cardboard, whatever I could find, whatever I could scavenge. And we have remade one of my other costumes, which was the Doom Slayer costume. That was an absolute mess in the first stage of it. So I'm glad we rebuilt that. But now we are rebuilding another favorite costume of mine that I really wanted to revisit actually and redesign the entire thing. And you guys have voted on it several months back because I asked about it. And here we are, welcome to part one of the Dead Space version two outfit. Let's go. So let's take a look at the old design, shall we? The old design was mashed up of different cardboard pieces, thick and thin. It was the first time I had to design something a little bit more intricate because there's a lot of pieces that had to get the initial shape of the helmet, especially the way this helmet was designed. This was based on the Dead Space 3 helmet, which I was a big fan of. Not that anybody should be a fan of Dead Space 3, it was okay, but it was a little too action packed and it just, you know, had its moments. Anyway, it was a pretty complex helmet for me because I never did something with a lot of sharp edges, especially if something is so well intricate as this Dead Space 3 helmet. So, I think it's time to put this old helmet to rest and completely redo this entire outfit. So introducing this new 3D printed Dead Space 1 helmet made by a gentleman named Kinsley Forge. Which, he actually had this helmet on sale along with some other blacksmith and molding products that he's selling. And I think you guys should go check him out. He's got some pretty cool forged items and molded items. Just little knickknacks here and there, but I think the guy does a very, very good job, like, hand making a lot of these little pieces. And the Dead Space helmet was just something he had for sale. And with this helmet, I thought about it, I was like, why don't we try to make a half foam, half 3D printed, fully electronical outfit to fully bring back my original Dead Space suit. So the first thing we're going to try and figure out is the lighting system in it. Now the helmet came with lights, however it was mainly just a display piece made by the gentleman and it wasn't really meant to be worn as a cosplay helmet. So I thought about it and I was like, why don't we try to cut three little LED strips of light and sync them all together into an S shape and hide them behind each grill behind the visor. This is probably the most complicated wiring system I've ever done. Granted, it's the first time I ever did individual LED light soldering, so this is a whole other challenge in itself. But, but I found some old wiring laying around in the garage uh, after I swapped Gary's radio system back into him. And I thought, okay, let's see if we can make this work. Just cut these wires a couple inches at a time and created an S-shaped circuit with these three individual LED lights. There's also a lot of trial and error with this, so it took me almost an entire roll of LED strips to get it to weigh, to get it to look like that, or to get it to function correctly, because either I would solder the wires too close, or they would burn out, or the LED would start flashing me because there's no circuitry to it. It was a whole mess, and a lot of it I didn't get on camera because it was really boring. <laughs> it was really boring to watch. But in the end, I got it to work. It was very finicky, but it all worked. With the LEDs finally functional and everything is soldered up correctly, I was able to basically create my own S-shaped, individually cut visor piece. So now for the painting process of this thing. Going back to the original design, there was a copper-esque or dark brown color that I've used in the original suit. And with this helmet, the guy painted it a gold, like a dark goldish color. So I knew at this point I'm gonna have to repaint this entire helmet. 
which is kind of necessary because I wanted to make sure the suit matched as far as the color coordination part of it. And if I was going to do any sort of weathering damage or battle damage, I had to make sure that the colors of that and the dirt marks and everything else were all correct. So the first thing I did was set the entire helmet using somewhere between 400 to 600 grit uh, smoothing sandpaper just to get the surface to pull back a little bit. So then when I paint it, the paint will stay on the freshly shaved down surface. I also wanted to do this because there was a little nasty uh, splotch mark on the side of the helmet after I guess the gentleman painted it or it might have been a defect in the 3D print itself. I've used a Rust-Oleum brown hammer color and I did two light coats and then one medium coat uh, towards the end to really solidify the brownish copper color. Now it's time for some weathering. I went super crazy on this one because I wanted to make sure this helmet was dirty. Isaac Clark don't keep his helmet clean. So it's gonna be covered in space ash, dirt, debris, stuff flying around in the air. So all I did was I took some regular black acrylic paint and splashed it all over the helmet using a little bit of water and then wiping it off immediately with a microfiber towel. And I did this process over and over and over and over again, all over the helmet. just. I was at the point where I was like, you know what? Perfect. Leave it. This roughly took me about almost four hours to do, obviously being a perfectionist, but within the four hours, I found new ways of splotching on a bunch of different dirt areas and different ways of piling up the dirt into one spot using just this black paint. I also went back and took a little bit of some chromish silver paint to go over the scars, made it look like it was a freshly cut scar that Isaac either just got sliced off from, like a piece of metal in space or from a necromorph. It gives it a little bit more depth as to just seeing some metal underneath the copper or brownish paint on top of it. After a long process of painting, you should get a little something like this. Now, as far as weathering, I am very picky about weathering. Now, if you take a look at this helmet, you can see I've done a lot of weathering. And the original paint job on this uh, was kind of basic. So I wanted to put my own little touch in and repaint the entire thing and then weather it uh, however I wanted. And as you can kind of see, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but in here is what I think it looks like a glue strip, like the guy was gluing all the pieces together. Because remember, this is 3D printed, so he glued all the pieces and stuff. But what it looks like, what it looks like is a weld mark to me. So I put some silver and dirtied it up a little bit, and it makes it look like it was a weld together helmet. Right in there, there's some pieces here that look like they were welded on as well. Yeah, there's an example right there. So it was just glue laying around, but I put some soda to make it look like it was a weld. And if you look at the scars on this, if we get a close up, 
The scars on this, I kind of put some silver paint on there as well. So it helps kind of bring out, like it's a fresh mark on the helmet, a little bit down here too. It helps bring that out a lot. I kind of learned this weathering technique from Adam Savage. If you guys haven't seen the YouTube channel Tested, he's done a lot of cool weathering techniques and he's done a lot of different prop builds using the same method that I use, which was basically splashing a bunch of black on, getting a wet rag or something and just damping it all over the place. And it really darkens and gritties up any sort of paint job. And I went all out on this because let's face it, Isaac Clark's helmet is never clean. Overall, I think this thing, this is probably one of the coolest builds that I've made so far. Even just for this, this has already been made, but even just putting my own little touch on it is fun. Like it was really enjoyable just to kind of throw in my own little tactic on it. And I want to give a shout out to the gentleman who made this. He did a very, very good job printing all these pieces and gluing it together too. I think his work is fantastic. I cannot take credit for how he built this thing and the quality of each individual piece was absolutely fantastic. But I'll leave his uh, Etsy page down in the description below if you wanna go check out more of his stuff. Other than that, I think this thing turned out pretty good. And actually the foam in here, it came with foam padding by the way. Um, so I was able to adjust it in the way I want it. And it's actually pretty snug. Yeah, it's pretty snug. And it doesn't wobble around if I do this. Because when I first put it on, it was like blah, 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 blah. it was like, it was a freaking mess, but pretty snug, very comfortable. I can move around in it. My only peripheral like is right here. My only sense of vision is this little bottom strip. That's it. This is in my face. This is not in my way. <laughs> All I have to see is this little line here. So two of the LEDs are kind of in my eyeballs. It's not that bad. Like I have some pretty good visibility here. Don't worry about the wire here because that's actually connected to a battery pack, which will be soon connected to the entire outfit. The way I'm gonna design the rig is with this cable here, it's gonna go inside the spinal, I don't know what you call it, the health bar or whatever. Um, so this will not exist. This is connected to a little battery pack in my pocket right now. But it is kind of cool. Like you can actually display this thing and just have a cable like this and then just just display it on a shelf and leave it like that. But other than that, let me know down in the comments below what you guys think. Part one of the Dead Space suit is complete. And it's gonna go on my shelf. Somewhere. Maybe I'll move the van off, so I'm gonna put it right there or something. I don't know, I'll figure it out. Give a thumbs up, let me know what you guys think. If you have any uh, pro tips for anything else you want me to add to the costume, let me know. Any Easter eggs, let me know as well. If you guys enjoyed this first part, be sure to give it a fat Dead Space like. Let me know down below, which, which? Dead Space game were you a big fan of? Uh, the original, two, three, or the remake? Some people like the remake, I don't know. You guys have an awesome rest of the week and I'll see you goons later. Basically create my own S-shaped individually cut uh, visor piece out of these three little LED, out of these three little LEDs. <laughs> Brain fart! Ding dong! Ding dong! Oh. Anyway, try it again. <laughs> well, my last my train of thoughts. Never mind! Ah. <laughs> I can't even talk. I'm like, ah! <laughs> so now for the painting process of this thing. Now after a long process of painting, you should get a little something like this. Now after a long process of painting, you get a little something like this. Or stash signing off. <laughs> Where did that even come from? This is Warp Stash voice test. Yeah, you can go to the fact that it kind of sounds like Bill Cosby, zip zappity zoop. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even do it anymore.